This is Lewis Maxey and I'm going to demonstrate my design project for vehicle electronics at Clemson University. I'm demonstrating a, a conceptual design of adaptive front lighting, a system that is still very much it's on the cutting edge. Companies like Audi and GM have started to create and incorporate their own adaptive lighting designs into their cars and it's a, those are just most likely a pre precursor for other companies getting into it as well. These systems can turn one side or all of a car's high beams off when it detects uh, another, uh, an oncoming car or it may be able to detect other ambient lighting like a street light, etc. This allows the driver to always have the highest state of visibility at all times while ensuring the safety of other drivers. And then some systems, which this is not what I'm demonstrating, but some of them can also rotate headlights to assist in looking ahead of an oncoming curve. So, to demonstrate my project, I've taken two toy cars and mounted them with LED bulbs that can be easily detected in low light or dark situations, which would be the time when adaptive front lighting would be utilized. So this is the trial car right here. On the front, it has uh, two high beams that are the clear bulbs and two low beams that are the red bulbs. The clear bulbs, one of them is blue and one of them is green, so you can easily detect during this demonstration which side is on or not. On top is a webcam. This webcam is conducting the image processing to determine whether which high beam should be on or none at all or both. And then on the back is the Arduino. This is the controls where the pulse width modulation is being issued to control whether a light is on or not. And that is determined by MATLAB sending a command. After it's processed the image, it'll say, turn the left bulb on or the right bulb on, etc. So on the left here is the trial car. I just made two simple low beam headlights and this car will ride up and prompt the trial car to either turn on or turn off its bright lights. So I've dimmed the lighting to make this demonstration a little more realistic. Um, right now we have our trial car, its high beams are off and its low beams are on and then we have an oncoming car with headlights on. So what happens is as this car curves and goes past. First, you can see that the high beam came over on the right side, and you can see where the light shining is not impeding this driver. Okay, then the car continues onwards, and it curves away further and heads on its way, and you see the left side high beam come on. So that's how it works. It, uh, it uses image processing to detect what is ahead and make sure not to, um, it makes sure to automatically control your lights and not impede the progress of it or safety of another driver. So I'm going to do one more trial. What I've done is back up distance wise each car to the maximum distance on the surface here and you can still see that the trial car does not have its bright lights on because it detects the headlights. This system can be very sensitive and can be very sensitive in real life. So as the car turns away even at this point as the image processing detects that hey there's no oncoming lights it turns both its brights on. I wanted to show you really quick like how the image processing worked for my demo. In the top left here, this is a calibration image. These high beams on the left and right, I'm just looking to see where they're actually shining and to, that way I can determine a region of interest to look for oncoming traffic. So the bottom left is a typical output from the webcam. It's taking several of these every second to try and update and see if there's oncoming traffic. In the middle, this is a, a crop of the bottom left picture. It's the region of interest and I'm trying to see oncoming traffic within this region where my headlights could affect. This is a grayscale image. This is taking the region of interest and converting it to grayscale. This means that pixels have values anywhere from zero to one. Something with a higher intensity would be closer to one. And then the top right here is where I've taken the grayscale image and converted it to a binary image using a threshold that I determine. Mine is 0 0.75, so any Grayscale value higher than 0 0.75 would become a 1 and is white, and anything below 0 0.5 is 0 and is black. So that's how I'm, that right there allows me to detect centroids and determine where the headlights are of an oncoming car, and then I can determine which light or if both need to be turned off or on. So thanks for watching my demonstration. I hope you learned something, and so stay tuned in the next few years. I'm sure you'll be seeing more of adaptive front lighting.